People who have quit their jobs on the spot, what was the moment when you finally snapped? When I was in college, I waited tables at a restaurant that was open on Thanksgiving, after I had already worked the lunch shift, covering for someone who took off for the holiday, I was ready to finish my shift and head out, so I could have Thanksgiving dinner with my family, when my manager informed me that they were going to need me to cover dinner shift too, because one of the older waitresses called out, probably to spend Thanksgiving with her family. When I told him I had plans already, he said I needed to cover the shift since I had a least seniority, and they wouldn't need someone who isn't a team player, implying I'd be fired if I didn't cover it. I told him, I don't need this job that much to miss Thanksgiving dinner with my family, and handed in my apron and left and never returned. Worked at Staples. Got transferred to a shitty store where I moved. After being top of sales for 3 months, new boss tells me I am the worst seller he ever saw. He told me I didn't sell a single extra warranty for the month and a half I was there and stuff. Told him I was there for 3 months and was on top of regional charts for that entire time. He told me no, that I had no proof. I got up and left his office. He follows me in the store almost yelling for me to come back and that he wasn't done. I took my shirt off, put it on a shelf and left. I got a call next morning. My supervisor calls me, telling me the manager ducked up and wanted me back. He mistook me for another guy with the same first name as me. I told them to politely duck off, and that they would never see me again. I worked for a local target in electronics. A store manager who was not my direct manager called me at my father's funeral to ask where I was and why I wasn't at the electronics boat, cash register. Days earlier I had told my manager that I wouldn't be there because I had to attend my father's funeral, was told it was okay. But this other manager just wasn't having it, and explained to me that she was in the store the same day her child was born. I have never worked for a more ignorant and inept manager. I was working in a ski shop at a local ski resort. They used a shuttle to ferry us up and down the canyon since most employees lived in a town nearby. They asked me if I was taking the shuttle, and said yes, but that I needed to put away the cash drawer real quick. When I finished and went down to meet them, they were gone. I was stuck on the mountain, without a vehicle, in minus 17 degree weather. Luckily my family had a cabin about 10 miles away to which I had a key. But I emailed my resignation on my walk to the cabin. What the hell did they expect you to do? Just die up there? They assumed I drove my own car, despite me explicitly saying I didn't. I had a boss that would schedule me 6 days a week, all split shifts, which would generally be 10 to 3, then 5 to 10, which pretty much took up all my time. One day she was on my ass about how I don't seem motivated to be here, that I'm lazy and to come back after my split with a better attitude. I told her I'm not coming back and she can duck off. Was a server in a shitty restaurant, where the owner's kids were managers and had no prior work experience. One kid set up a deal with a bank for a private party, and I ended up just serving and bartending for this group of 20 to 30 my entire shift. Comes time for them to pay the hill, and the manager that set up the special deal, it was a limited menu, but for a huge discounted slash said price, wasn't there. So the manager that was there assumed the previously discussed amount included tip, 20% minimum on groups of 8 or more. It did not. So after closing out, I was informed that due to their miscommunication, I would not be receiving any money at all. More so, because I served many of the patrons alcohol, I had to tip out the bartender at the main bar, even though I actually bartended by myself at the wine bar. So this little ass had wanted me to pay something like $150 at the end of a full shift. Walked out and never went back. Place shut down a few months later, to the surprise of no one. It was just when I was in high school working at McDonald's. Before they would give you a raise, you had to do all this BS, train people, watch videos, take quizzes, really easy, but annoying and tedious. I did all of this, didn't get a raise. I asked every store manager, and they said that it would show up on my next check. Eventually I called the regional manager, who had put his phone up in the break room, but he answered, don't call this number, and hung up on me. So I told my boss I quit and just walked out. 
I quit on the spot from McDonald's because I couldn't find the trash bags, weren't in any of the closets or the two three random places they were usually at. I asked a manager if he had seen them, and he said, oh my god, are you a ducking retard? And pulled them out from a location I had never seen them before in the two years I had worked there. I just started laughing and I was like, hey, I'll be back in 20 minutes. Went home, changed, and brought all my uniforms. I had two other jobs and was only working there two nights a week, so I wasn't too worried about using them for a resume or anything. I was a nanny for three kids. They were hell to deal with. One day, I told the 11 year old it was time to sit down and do homework. Apparently this angered him, because his response was to try to stab me. After I took it away from him, I immediately called the parent and told her to come home now. I was done. As soon as she got home I left. Her response was, well they've hit all their sitters. She never told me before accepting the position, that the children had such severe issues that were way out of my league. I occasionally go by their house on errands, and every single time I see the kids with a new nanny. They all just quit shortly after being hired. On a Monday morning, after my and my team's paycheck had been two weeks late, for like a hundredth time. I asked the boss if he had wired the money at all, as he had a habit of lying that he did, only to wire it days later, to which he responded with, we don't ducking start a ducking work week with such questions, we started with ducking reports from the week before. Duck him. I literally just quit. So I worked at my company for 3 years, and was asking for more responsibility and a raise. Was told there was no room in the budget. Alright not a problem. The new kid that joined just a few months prior got a sign on bonus, commission bonus, and raise within 2 to 3 months. This kid loved to talk about everything. I told my boss I wanted to put in my 2 weeks, and he just stared at me. I asked if he wanted to know why, and he said, I'm not having this conversation while you're being emotional. I laughed at him, walked inside and said my goodbyes and left on the spot. Now I'm enjoying my summer. Edit, I'm not a female. My boss just sat behind a computer most of his life, and never learned people skills or how to handle confrontations. So he goes for a sarcastic response when in a corner. I've told this story before. I had just started working at a secure psychiatric facility for emotionally disturbed children at the start of the summer, end of May. At the interview I told the HR person that I had a pre-planned trip home for later in the summer and that since I was driving I was going to be away for two weeks, I hadn't been home to see my family for two years. I made it clear to her that if this was going to be a problem to let me know right then, and I would seek employment elsewhere. She reassured me it wouldn't be a problem, and that she would leave a note in my file saying as much. So the time for my trip nears, I give them the two weeks notice as agreed upon at the interview, but my immediate supervisor refuses to approve the time off. Figuring it was a miscommunication, I tell the immediate super about the interview agreement with HR, that the issue was already settled at the initial interview. So she gives me this runaround and asks me to give her a couple of days to come up with a solution. Next day she calls me into her office and has the balls to say, okay, I know how we can work this. You can work a double shift on Saturday, 18 hours mind you, then leave for home right after and make your drive. 30 hours non-stop, visit your family for 3 days, then drive back, 30 hours non-stop, and arrive in time to work another double. I couldn't stop myself. I laughed uncontrollably. I asked her if she was seriously suggesting I stay awake for 48 hours straight, 30 of those spent on highways crossing the country. She just gave me this stupid smile and said, yes, you can do it. You have a responsibility to the center. I laughed in her face and told her I wouldn't work for such a cesspool, a place that would dare suggest I put my personal safety in harm's way and wouldn't honor an agreement made. I quit in the spot. I was still scheduled for the rest of that week, they had the nerve to call me at home that night asking if I was coming in. I told the person who called, no way in hell, and I told him what happened. Then the super called me and basically said I had to come in, I was scheduled. I suggested she could cover my shift, I mean she already worked 9 hours, what was another 18, she could do it. 
I left for my trip the next day. I worked at a grocery store as a bagger, and they asked me to clean a destroyed bathroom. I mean shit everywhere. All over the toilet, the walls, the ducking ceiling. Anyways, I said this is not worth my minimum wage and left. Worst part is, my friend got me the job there, and they saved it for him to clean the next day. He quit on the spot also. I quit on the spot from a Verizon call center, but not for the reason you would think. I had a call where a guy wanted a cheaper plan and wanted it now. I did some number crunching so I could tell the guy exactly what his weird partial plan bill would look like, since he was changing his plan in the middle of his billing cycle, and things will look weird on the next bill. I do the math and change the plan, and the guy was super happy, I feel good about being able to solve his issue. Fast forward, I get a failed survey from the guy, now in my call center that means your pay gets docked. I listen to his recorded feedback, and he is freaking out because he's angry he got a survey. That had nothing to do with me or how I helped him, so I sent it to QA asking them to overturn it so my pay doesn't get affected. They listened to the call and said my fail was valid, because I had one part in my call where I was quiet for 30 seconds, while doing math, I couldn't talk and crunch all the numbers. That was my last straw among a lot of other shit, so I rage quit. They asked if I wanted to finish my day first. I gave them my badge and left. Duck that. Duck Verizon. TLDR. Got a failed survey in a call center for a customer complaining about getting a survey, and they said my fail was valid so I quit. I worked at a call center in Canada that sold phone packages for a major US phone network. It was cold calls, and we could see the customer's average monthly phone bill when we were speaking to them. I had an elderly lady whose bill was in the $30 a month range, never made long distance calls, didn't want or need voicemail, etc. I didn't even bother trying to sell her a package worth $120 a month. I didn't know I was being audited on that call, and was called into the manager's office and had a strip tore off me. Quit on the spot. I'm a nanny. The mom I was working for was an absolute nutcase. I loved all four children and they loved me daily. I spent 50 hours a week at their house. On top of taking care of all four, and making sure they were all at their 500,000 extracurricular activities and constantly entertained, she insisted her giant home be cleaned by me and all six people's laundry be done every single day. She liked the bins to be completely empty. I kept up with it. After a while she got more and more demanding, even leaving her dishes out after breakfast for me to clean. I talked to them about how my only responsibility should be the kids. They agreed. A couple weeks later she went back to her old self, and was texting me after work no more than 10 minutes after I'd get out the door, about dust and other petty things. I told her she needed to stop, and reminded her about the conversation we had. She blew up, and said if I didn't do better, they'd have to find someone else. I drove straight to her house and dropped her car seats off out front. I never went back, and I blocked her number. I miss the kids and hate that I couldn't say bye, but I don't regret it at all. I had a job that always needed at least one person stationed there, at peak, it could go up to six if we opened other stations. Most times, I was the only person, but it was understood that if I requested a second person, I probably needed them, if not immediately, then within the next half hour. It was just after the Christmas peak. When we needed the six, and an hour into my shift I realized one person wasn't enough, so started asking for another person. Kept asking every 15 minutes, because I was drowning, and it wasn't a slow drown. Second hour into the shift, an hour after I started asking, one of the managers decided to tell me the equivalent of, oh, you're good. You don't need the help. Bitch, yes I do. And now? You need two people because I quit. I was working as a software developer for a company that, shall we say didn't understand the value of its IT team. I could go on and on about the shit we had to put up with there. One day my direct boss, the only person in senior management who could tell his ballsack from a computer, who had personally hired all of us, and was our shield against the shit show of the rest of the company, told our team he was leaving, so we all were on edge. 
I had been promised a sizable performance bonus in lieu of a raise, because the CEO was a cheap piece of shit and I was planning on quitting anyway, so I figured, whatever. When my performance review came up, I wrote up a spreadsheet detailing how I had fulfilled every aspect of my bonus requirements, and I emailed it to my new supervisor. I didn't get a response. So I went into his office Friday morning and asked about it. He said that before they could give me the bonus, I had to provide detailed documentation and training on all the code and work I'd done for the past year, because they couldn't guarantee I wouldn't just walk out the second I got my money. I told him they could either pay me the money they owed me for the work I'd done to date, which was the agreement. And I would do everything in my power to make sure they could continue, if, and when, I left, or I could walk out at that moment and leave them with nothing. And I did exactly that. The entire dev team quit over the next 6 months. I worked as a telemarketer for 2 days. There was a law, or maybe it was just their rule, but we couldn't solicit to senior citizens. The gimmick was a free gas card with magazine subscriptions. This was one of those times gas prices were skyrocketing. Most numbers were pre-screened, so I only ever got one senior citizen. She went on and on about how much the gas card was going to help her, that she drive the church van or something insanely pure. When I asked her to confirm she was between age 18 to 55 or whatever it was, she said she was 80. I put her on hold and got my manager. He told me to just tell her the gift card was on the way and hang up. I told him this job wasn't going to work for me. Edit slash add, the gift card was never sent, boss made it extremely clear it was just easier to lie and hang up, and that that was their policy. Pallet of packs of bottled water toppled over, pinning me against a wall, managed to get my radio and ask for someone to come out the back and help me immediately. 15 minutes later I get assistance. Not from the staff mind you, someone coming in to start their shift. Hauling pallets is meant to be a two person job, but in the four years I was on delivery it was almost always just me. Oh, and I only got put on delivery because the guy who was doing it before, popped the end of his little finger off when a poorly stacked pallet caught his hand between a door and the stock. I found out that the owner of a quizness had been rounding my hours down on my paychecks, and when I confronted her about it, she blowed it off and said I was making way too big a deal over some $40. Then she said, the Pepsi order isn't going to put itself away, you know. I went out to the front of the store just as people started to line up for the lunch rush, and I took my apron off and left. Halfway to the door the store manager caught up to me, and we left together, and the store owner only caught on to it as she saw us leaving the parking lot. $40 isn't a big deal. Then you shouldn't have a problem getting me my $40. The paychecks kept bouncing. I'm not talking, oh, shit, sorry, here's your money type of thing. It was a small business, so the first time I just figured he forgot to make a deposit into the payroll account. He kept blaming the bank, eventually just told me to take it out of the register. The other two employees didn't get paid. Next check. The next guy was able to take money out of the register, but myself and the third guy couldn't because the money just wasn't in the register. The store needed to pull in 10k a month to be profitable, and we barely pulled into k. He didn't advertise, didn't get us parts, we were a cell phone repair store in a Walmart, and wouldn't let us do what needed to be done to grow the store. Eventually the manager had it and just walked out, so I got stuck watching the store while the owner worked out the payroll issues. My girlfriend at the time lived in Nashville, and I lived in North Carolina. She was pregnant and got into some sort of accident, so I booked a trip out there. When I returned to North Carolina, I didn't even bother answering their calls. Never got a final check. They deleted my hours from the payroll system, and I had proof of this, and reported them. The state sided with them because I couldn't prove I actually worked those hours. I quit a part-time job when my idiot of manager changed the schedule on Wednesday, so I was scheduled to work on Thursday, which was a night I had made clear I couldn't work due to my full-time job. Of course he doesn't tell me he changed the schedule. I get home Thursday, dead tired, and pour myself a glass of wine and settle in for my first quiet evening in ages. And the phone rings. It's the idiot of manager's boss asking why I wasn't at work. 
so I pull out my copy of the schedule and tell him exactly when I was scheduled to work. He asks, so, are you coming in? I paused as if I was considering it, then answered, no, I'm quitting. Zero regrets. My first job was a telemarketer as a senior high school student. I should have known it was super shady, by our script showing lots of locations crossed out from where they were located previously, and the office looking like it could be packed up at any moment. Even the script had canned responses to questions like, how much money is it in total? And we were supposed to answer, I'm not really sure. I'm not very good at math. Anyways, everything was confirmed when I became friends with one of the most tenured telemarketers there. And he said they basically get your credit card and charge a whole bunch of money on it, which is the lump sum plus all these hidden fees slash charges. I quit at the end of the day. I used to work at Geek Squad. I walked out when the precinct chief, basically a manager, told me I had to charge an elderly woman $349.99 just to get past a forgotten windows password to view photos of her deceased husband. Screw that. Anyone who knows even the basics of the windows OS, can attest to how simple it is to bypass the password screen with any number of fixes. It's a two second thing. I did it for her, put my stupid little badge on the counter, and then walked off.